Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. On this week's special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, our favorite beef recipes. Stay with us. I'm hungry already. NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen starts right now. And now, a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Ochsner. Thanks for joining us. Need some beef recipe ideas? Our favorite chefs, Laura, Shanoa, and Kristen, are cooking up some great ideas. Let's head to the kitchen. At the end of a long, hard day, there's nothing better than coming home to a big, juicy steak dinner. And it's even better with a little bit of a twist. Here in the studio to show us a great way to spice it up is NCBA chef Laura Hagen. Lauren, you, you, you have a, a, a flat iron, I think, for us today. Is I that do. Right? Yep, I do. This picked it up at the grocery store. Okay. Super, super easy. The nice thing about these flat irons is oftentimes in your local grocery store, they have them in vacuum packages. Okay. So it lasts a little bit longer. Sure. You can keep it in the fridge. Works really well in the freezer. So if you want to, you know, find them on sale and sure. get them and put them in the freezer, it will prevent that freezer burn because there's no air in there. So I have a, this one's probably about 12 ounces, okay. so it's a pretty good size. It's not something sure. you're going to cook up and just eat yourself. Right. Um, more than likely you cook this probably, or cut this up into probably two or three portions. Sure. Um, we like to give about four ounces raw, three ounces cooked mm -hmm. of beef um, in our recipes mm -hmm. and for um, portion control. Makes a great steak. Yeah, so Very all nice. I did is cut this up into four pieces. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the skillet that I cooked the steaks in. Okay, so you about, just put yep. them on stovetop. I put pressed a little pepper yep. into the uh, steaks themselves, and then I put all four in the skillet. Sure. Medium hot. Okay. About 12 to 14 minutes. Yep. You got to be a little careful, and you got to play around a little bit with temperature when sure. you're you want to get a good sear on it right, right. away, get that right. nice uh, caramelized color, you bet. but then turn it down a little bit so okay. that it can cook through. Yep. What we're going to do now is we're going to create our mustard ah, bourbon sauce. Very good. That sounds good. Yeah. So we t here's the skillet, as I said. Yep. We just have it on very low temperature. Right. If you can see, there's a little bit of brown here. Oh, sure. Um, I've already worked on the sauce a little bit. Okay. But what we're doing is we're deglazing. Ah. So when you add liquid to a pan that you've cooked in, mm -hmm. your, your real goal is just to pick up all that good bits. Those you are bet. all those uh, kind of reduced be uh, yeah. bits of beef, beef that have been cooked. Makes it tasty. Yeah. And we're just going to work that around. I would probably, with this one, add a little bit more liquid, maybe okay. a little bit more cream or even a little water, just to loosen it a little bit. So your glaze is made up of what again? This is mustard. mustard. So it's a Dijon mustard. Oh, yeah. Bourbon. Hmm. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I know, I know. And a little bit of um, heavy whipping cream. Oh, you're kidding me. So it gives it a little bit of uh, that thickness. Yeah. This is reduced a little bit, so as you see, it's getting kind of thick yes. at this point. And then I would serve my flat iron probably with the sauce, yeah. and then maybe a green vegetable like a broccolini yeah. or broccoli or green beans or something like that. So our finished product is right there. It looks absolutely delicious and smells better. Thanks so much for this great idea. You're very welcome. For this recipe and other great tasting beef recipes, just log on to our website at cattlemanthecattleman.org. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and there's no better breakfast than one that includes beef. NCBA chef Kristen Ledgerwood is here to show us how to turn Mexican style beef sausage, eggs, and potatoes into a great meal. Kristen, you know, we have so many great lunch and dinner recipes mm -hmm. for beef, and now you've brought us a great re a be a breakfast recipe. Yeah, and this is, we came up with a, a nice twist on using ground beef mm -hmm. and being able to uh, make a breakfast sausage out of it. That's great. But today I actually brought you a Mexican style. So we did okay. a little bit of a twist than your typical yeah. breakfast sausage that we've got. Um, and what I did is actually added... Um, some just real simple pantry ingredients that you'd have at home. Okay. Um, and took a pound of ground beef mm -hmm. into the skillet. We added in some smoked paprika. Yes. Some chipotle chili powder. Okay. Dried oregano, mm -hmm. garlic powder, mm -hmm. salt, and then red wine vinegar. Really? Yes. That sounds interesting. So it gives you that nice little 
tang um, with it. It gives it a nice little, um, uh, little Mexican flair. So. That's great. Yeah. So, so you've cooked the beef already, it looks like. Yeah, so I went ahead and cooked the beef. The one nice thing about this recipe is it's a one skillet recipe. Ah. So I cooked the beef ahead of time in mm. the skillet here. Okay. Um, we went ahead and drained it and pulled it to the side. Mm -hmm. And then I just took thinly sliced potatoes and onions, oh. and I added those to my skillet. So I've already started this, kind of getting it ahead of, ahead of schedule here for us. Perfect. Um, and I'm just going to take off the lid here. Yep. We're going to give it a nice stir. stir? Yeah. What we're looking for is for our potatoes and onions to start um, in a little cooked through, okay. kind of translucent, I will. Sure. Okay. And we've got some really nice color on this. Yeah. So we're at the point now where we're just going to go ahead and add our ground beef. Okay, back. just on top. Just add it to All it right. right on top, yep. So we're going to stir that in. Okay, very good. Okay. Beef and potatoes has got potatoes. a good start. That's right. <laughs> um, this is a really nice recipe that you can make um, for your family yeah. and, um, and have breakfast on the table you bet. in, in no time. So add in our ground beef. Okay. And then last I took six, um, six whole eggs. Okay. I just whisked them up nicely. Sure. Okay. We're going to just go ahead and pour that right on top. On top. Okay. Oh, that's outstanding. Just like that. Okay, put those off to the side. We're going to just kind of, because of the size of your pan, if right. you need to, just move it around a little bit. Gotcha. Make it nice and totally even. Mixed yeah, and, yeah, you're wanting it to be nice and even in there. And then I just kind of give it a nice little spread here, because what we're going to do is actually we're going to put it in the oven now. Oh, gotcha. For and how long? For about 15 minutes. Okay. Um, your key is you, you want to make sure that all the egg has been cooked through. It's sure. not runny. So as, sure. as long as you can kind of jiggle the pan and you don't see any, any liquid movement. Well, you're you're right on. Go. You're good to go. So, we're just going to go ahead and and pop that in the oven. Uncovered. Uncovered. Yep. Uh, 350. And this is our final product. And this then. is yep. That and is and it. it looks like you put some cheese on top of that now, huh? I did. So we we added a little bit of uh, a Mexican cheese blend that you can grab at the store. Um, also, you could also uh, you could use manchego cheese if you want. Just a little bit of a different, you know, more Spanish flair. So. Well, Kristen, it looks like a great recipe and a wonderful way to start the day. Very much so. It's got beef in it. So. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for coming again. Thank you for having me. For this recipe and other great tasting beef recipes, just log on to our website at cattlemanandcattlemen.org. There's an easier way to help protect your horse from West Nile virus. West Nile Innovator. No other vaccine has helped protect more horses. Talk to your veterinarian today. New Holland is smart for the way you farm. And New Holland round balers are smart for the way you raise cattle. By focusing on making the densest bale possible, New Holland round balers pack more into each bale, saving you time, fuel, and money. Now that's smart. We can also match your feeding requirements with a variety of bale slicing, cutting, and wrapping options to help maximize your time. Plus, with models designed specifically for silage or specialty crop harvest, New Holland gives you the power to make smart choices to fit your farm or ranch. You work hard to get the most out of every hay season to benefit you and your cattle. From mower conditioners to balers and tractors, New Holland has the right solutions to help you make quality hay and forage for your cattle operation. Visit your New Holland dealer to learn more about the complete lineup of New Holland equipment, in addition to all the benefits available to cattle producers. You may not think about beef as a fun and easy meal for your kids, but chances are this recipe will have them asking for more. Here in the studio to show us how you can turn steak into a bite-sized meal that's perfect for kids 
is NCBA chef Laura Hagen of the Culinary Innovations team. Laura, thanks for coming back to the show. Absolutely, thanks. You, you know, one of my constant pet peeves in our industry is it doesn't seem like we've ever had a real response to the poultry industry's chicken nuggets that kids right. just love. But it looks like you've got something for us here. Tell well, us about we it. We think we found the answer. Um, obviously, we all love beef. So we wanted to find a cut that we could use to make a nugget of sorts mm -hmm. and make it really super easy, make it fun for kids to do with their families, sure. and simple, simple, easy to cook. So what I have here is cube steak. Oh, okay. See cube steak in the store? Sure. It's actually a really nice, cheaper alternative to yeah. a, a standard sirloin or, or right. other steak. And it has some tenderization to it, so you have a cheaper cut, but it's tenderized. Yes. So you have a good chew to it as good. well. So when it cooks, it cooks really fast, and it uh, ends up um, being quite tender. Yeah. So what I've set up here is a dredging station. Okay. So whenever you're doing anything that's breaded, you okay. should set up this little station. Oh. Um, usually people will use like a shallow bowl. Okay. Um, if you have something that's flat, like maybe a, a, a bigger steak or something along that lines, if you're doing country fried steak, sure. we're doing these little bites, so I just put them in Small deeper bowls. bowls. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to take a couple, show you how we okay. do it. First, we put it in flour. That's just regular flour. Regular all-purpose flour. Yeah, good. And what I like to do is I like to do the wet-dry rule. Oh. So with this hand, and you, obviously I have gloves on, so yep. I'm not getting too goopy, but um, I like to do um, the left hand dry okay. and the right hand wet. Ah, okay. So we don't get so goopy. So as you're doing multiple batches of these, you, you don't end up with batter yep. in the uh, flour. So I'm going right? to take this and I'm going to stick that in Perfect. there yeah. gingerly. And then I'll use my right hand. Okay. And that's just, uh, you just beat up uh, eggs? It is two eggs that we've just beaten up. Yep. Sounds terrible to say it that way, but uh, whipped. <laughs> we've whipped them. That's right. We want to be uh, very cautious not to beat eggs. All and right. Then obviously I'm going to put this in with my wet hand, but then I'm going to take it out with my dry hand. Okay. So we Pop it there. And what do we have here? This is actually potato chips. Oh, you're kidding. We took those ridged potato chips sure. and just broke them down. You can put them into a, a Ziploc. Sure. Run just a rolling pin them. over them or beat them with your fist or oh, however yeah. you want to do I, it. That, that's perfect. And this is what we've come up with. It's a Meat really and potatoes simple. right there. Yep. They go onto a broiling pan. Okay. These come with every oven that consumers have at home. Mm -hmm. And we put a little bit of Pam spray. Okay. We put them in um, on the broiler pan like this. You can line it with foil, which is kind of nice, real sure. easy to clean underneath. Okay. And then it goes into um, the broiler. Mm -hmm. So I like to do it on a high broil, so it's you know, getting up there in temperature, 500 or so. For about how long then? These ones took six minutes. Oh, is that all? Yeah. So, so it's really, quick really too. quick. Mm -hmm. Really quick. And so. There is our finished product yeah. there. We've and, got and, and you're calling these popcorn steak bites? Steak bites, yes. I need to try one of these. That's and you have ketchup there, mm -hmm. but you can use mustard, you can use barbecue sauce, ranch dressing, whatever you'd like to, That's perfect. to have, whatever the kids like. Fun, quick, and easy. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. For this recipe and other great beef recipes, just log on to our website at cattlemanandcattlemen.org. As cattlemen, we spend a lot of time at home on our farms and ranches, and sometimes it's nice to have a steak with a little bit of international flair. Here in the studio to show us a great new beef recipe is NCBA chef Kristen Ledgerwood. Now, Kristen, I have to tell you, we eat a lot of beef, but typically our beef doesn't include peanut butter and jelly with it, so you're going to have to tell me what you got going here. Well, today, Kevin, we uh, thought we'd take a little bit more of an international twist to um, your traditional flank recipes. Sure. Um, so today we're actually, you know, there's there's a lot of demand uh, lately for for international recipes. Sure. So we decided to bring you a Pacific Rim kind of kick on um, on flanks. So, that sounds great. Well, yeah. Show us what you got. Well, um, today we're going to actually start. We've got two components. So you've got your you've got your beef. Sure. Um, we today we brought flank steak. Okay. Now um, flank is a less tender cut. So sure. typically uh, marinade would be for about six to uh, six hours to overnight. All right. Um, so we um, you can use that if you have the time. But mm -hmm. if you're kind of running short on time, but you still want to have that international kick for dinner, um, you can always go to the store and pick up a top sirloin. Oh, perfect. Um, and then a little more tender cut. We don't have to marinate. As long exactly about 15 minutes just to pop the the flavors on there and and you can get it get it on the grill and and have dinner Great, a little I'll bit faster this. so okay um, so as far as our marinade we're yeah. actually going to use our marinade not only just for our flank but we're going to take some out before we put it in with our our beef and we're going to use it as a dressing oh, for perfect. a salad that we've made ahead of time okay um, so our dressing marinade mixture is a uh, teriyaki marinade sauce just Very right good. in the jar yep. so we're just going to go go ahead and pour that in okay. there 
Um, and you're right, we've got some jelly here. We actually have orange marmalade. No so kidding. a little bit of citrus, kind of give you that, that yeah. zing to it that you're, you know, just kind of what is, what is that? Yeah. yeah. So we're going to add that in there. And then we're going to add creamy peanut butter. That so, is just so amazing to think, yeah, peanut butter and marmalade and steak. I'm, I'm anxious to hear more about that. It's a little different, right? No so we're going to add all those guys together. Okay. And what do you and have then, there? This is a, uh, a mixture of ginger and garlic. Okay. So you've got some of those. Give it a little kick. Well, and with the ginger as well, it's going to add um, an element for... Um, marination. It's oh, going to help break down. I didn't realize Break it down everything. So we're just going to give this a um, quick stir. Yep. Whip that up. Huh? Whisk it up a little bit. Sure. Get all your peanut butter mixed up in there. That's so great. you know, it's it's. We great. always have peanut butter around. The I house, was going to no say problem. you probably have Absolutely. at least two of these components at yep. home, especially no with there. kids. Yep. It's kind of your go-to, right? Hold so up that open for that you. That would be great. So like I said, I'm just going to pour in all but about two thirds okay. of that. We're going to hold that off and um, and we're just going to give this a nice seal. Gotcha. And then you're just going to throw that back in the fridge and you said six, seven, eight hours, whatever. Six hours overnight, yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, and then just give it a, um, halfway through, just give it a, a, a flip over so oh, that perfect. you can get some even even coverage on that. Very so, good. Um, and then tell us about the salad part. So the salad part, it, we made um, whole grain pasta. Oh. Uh, we used uh, whole grain spaghetti. Yeah. Um, you could really use any of your favorite whole grain thin, thin pasta at mm -hmm. home. Um, but we just cooked that, and then we, at the, towards the end, we added in some broccoli, carrots, and red pepper, mm -hmm. um, just to give those a nice blanch so they'll become a little tender. Mm -hmm. um, drained everything, and then, like I said, we uh, used the rest of our marinade as a dressing. So we just tossed everything in at the end, and, um, and, and we're ready our, to serve. Yeah. Our final product, and uh, it, it, what, a, what a great new way. Uh, to uh, to cook a flank steak, that's a, that's a great idea. It is, and uh, you know, it's what's nice is you know we happen to use the broiler for oh, did for you? this today, but you know it, it's a great alternative that if you don't have the ability to grill, mm -hmm. is you can pop that right in on a, a broiling pan, so you can do everything at home and make it make it really easy and fast. You so. guys always bring us such innovative, good ideas. Thank <laughs> you so much. Well, thank you for having me. For this recipe and other great tasting beef recipes, just log on to our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Visiting your local farmer's market during the warm summer months is a very relaxing experience. You can pick up a wide variety of fresh produce directly from the producer. And all of that can come together to create something we like to call farmer's market vegetable beef and brown rice salad. And Shanoa French is with us today. She comes to us from the Beef Culinary Innovation Center to tell us how all this comes together. Shanoa, thanks for coming back to the show. Thanks for having me. We're going to um, start with a recipe today that's um, out of the Healthy Beef Cookbook. Sure. And um, that recipe, the Healthy Beef Cookbook was designed to pull some great lean cuts mm -hmm. and some vegetables together and then it has now been used as part of the bold study. Well tell us more about that. We've heard a lot about that at NCBA convention and so forth. Give us some perspective. Well, um, from the culinary part of it, they, we say that the bold diet is the DASH diet, which is mm. um, a, da a diet that was used to lower sodium and, and um, hypertension in patients, and it's on beef. So we call it the, beef, the DASH diet on beef, is what we're saying. And bold stands for? Beef in an op optimum lean diet. Fantastic. So they, they found that you can use beef in your diet and have the same results without it. So we might as well eat it, right? Something a lot of us have always yes, known, right? Yes, absolutely. Well, what do we, what do we have? Uh, we're using a top round today, is that we right? Are. So okay. this recipe calls for uh, a pound of top round steak, okay. about an inch thick. And what we're going to do, as you know, top round needs to be marinated. Sure. So we're going to start with the marinade, um, and then we'll put it in the refrigerator, and it needs to be marinated overnight or at least six hours, and okay. we'll kind of move through the recipe. Um, this one starts with a little bit of honey. Wow. Um, so we've got about two tablespoons of honey. Yes. And to that, we're going to add some fresh lemon juice. All right. And that lemon juice will help break down your honey just a little bit. Gotcha. So in there, then you're going to add some olive oil, which is ah. another one of those... Good, Good healthy fats, yes. yeah. Some um, fresh garlic, garlic. minced now garlic. We're talking. Yeah, I love absolutely. Garlic. And in here, I have some salt and pepper and a little bit of fresh thyme. Oh. And remember, if you um, use fresh thyme, you want to pull it backwards on the stems to get it off the leaves. You've told us that That's before. That's that trick that That's makes right. it real easy to come off. So I'm going to dump it all in there. Fantastic. We'll move these. And I'm going to mix this together. The reason I put it in this little dish is mm -hmm. you need to pull a quarter of a cup out, um, and that's going to be used for the marinade, and then the rest of it 
is the dressing for the next day. Oh, I see. So yeah, I'm gonna pull it into one of these little measuring cups okay. and get a total on it. Yeah, that honey kind of kind of sticks in the bottom of there. In. Yeah. Is that fantastic. We'll get this out of the way, and it looks like we have just about a half cup. So I'm okay. gonna get rid of about half of this. Very good. We'll go into here. Good. And we'll pull. The rest. The rest it's, becomes a dressing. The rest fantastic. becomes a dressing. So oh. what you'll do is um, throw your steak in. Oh, yeah. It's easiest to use a Ziploc. Sure. Um, I'm gonna pull these guys off real quick. Um, seal your air out. Yeah. Zip it shut. Yeah, and make sure you get a good toss. I see. <laughs> um, and then if you think about it, you put it in there the night before, toss it the next morning before you leave for work. Gotcha. Um, gets a good... But about 12 uh, hours or so. Yeah, at least overnight, so okay, whatever works. So this would go in the refrigerator, in the refrigerator. as right. well as the rest of your marinade for tomorrow. Very good. So we're going to get these out of the way. Yep. And we're going to move on to the main components here All right. of this got dish. got some asparagus going. Yeah, so asparagus and um, yellow zucchini or yellow squash. Mm -hmm. You can use, if you need to switch out your vegetables, like you said, if you visit your local farmer's market sure. and they don't have asparagus, find something else. Just make sure you stick within the same family of vegetables because okay. if you get something with more, much more liquid, it'll change your consistency. I see. So um, a squash and about a cup of um, asparagus in here. Gotcha. You'll give them a nice heat, just brown them a little bit so they start to cook and, and kind of break down. Yep. To that, we're going to add three cups of brown rice. I see. Um, you can either make it from scratch at home sure. you can buy the frozen kind frozen kind um, is good. microwave kind whatever yeah, works just sure. make sure that it's hot because okay. otherwise it'll change how long your dish takes to cook gotcha. so three cups in here and yeah. i'm going to mix it all into one big skillet all if right. you don't have a skillet that's large enough to mix everything into the skillet yes. um, you can cook your vegetables and then put everything into a mixing bowl i, see. I don't like dirtying extra dishes so that's yeah so also the there's a, a cup of um Diced tomato, we have de-seeded these, ah. so cut them in half and kind of pull all those wet, moist seeds out of gotcha. them. Get rid of them, it makes things a little neater in here. Gotcha. That goes it's in. colorful. Yes. Um, a cup of uh, garbanzo beans. Garbanzo beans, Yeah, so Very this good. is the stuff that starts to make hummus, if you're okay. not familiar with those. Sure. Um, these are canned, just drain them. And some basil. And some basil, fresh cut basil, um, about a quarter of a cup. Mm -hmm. Give Look that a that. nice, nice toss in there. Yeah. And then, um, left over out of the refrigerator comes that oh, dressing. Fantastic. So the yeah. dressing gets tossed in there. Okay, gotcha. So you don't wait till the end of the I mean are you doing this this right now? Yeah, so this right? would well you put your you put your steak in the night before gotcha. and this would be the day you're the ready day to you're serve doing. that. Perfect. So yep. that leftover marinade came out of there. All right. Um, go ahead and give this a good toss. That looks great. Look how colorful yeah. that is. So now is here comes the hero. What we have done with the beef. Absolutely. Is, it's gone out of the refrigerator. And um, onto a broiler pan. Oh, So okay. I, I'm not sure how familiar. Um, if you want to use this on the grill, you could do that too because we are in the summertime. Sure. But the difference between broiling and grilling is basically just the location of your heating element. Oh. So when you're using a broiler, um, it's the very top two to three inches of your oven. Gotcha. And there's real hot heat, heat coming down. down Make sure you use a broiler pan. And sure. the big trick with that is, is that there's a pan oh, underneath. Line yep. We line it with foil so it's easy cleanup. Yep. And then the steak goes right on top. It looks good to me. So we're going to go ahead and pull this off and yeah. do some slices. Fantastic. And you'll just slice, slice this across the grain. Yes. Um, Look at that. Nice. And a nice medium rare. As thick as you want. If you um, yes. have smaller kids and that kind of stuff and you want to cut it in half this way first Just so your to make pieces it easier are shorter, yeah. um, you can do that. But go wow. ahead and cut this whole steak yeah. all the way across and then you're mm -hmm. going to either fan it across yep. or what we've done here for individual portion Doesn't sizes. Doesn't that look great? Is we've done the portion size of the um, rice and vegetable mix underneath and then your four ounces of lean beef on the top. And what we've talked about is this is part of the bold diet yes. and the my plate which yeah. have all kind of been put together. So this gives you your half of your plate of fruit and vegetables, a quarter of your grains yeah. and then a quarter of your proteins and then they top it off with your dairy. So this is a my plate meal and part of the bold study all at once. You've got it all covered. Absolutely. You don't has, have to sacrifice a great tasting dish to also be taking care of your health. Absolutely. Thanks so much for coming. This looks delicious. Thanks. To get recipes like this and, and, and more, head to our website at cattleman to cattleman.org. Hi there, I'm Joey. And I'm Rory, and welcome to our farm outside Nashville, Tennessee. When we go to work, whether it's on tour or here at home, we wear the West. That's right. Where it's that perfect snap shirt 
or that perfect pair of boots. When you wear Roper, you wear the West. Learn more about us, Joey and Rory, and about Roper Western wear at eroper.com. Telling the truth and being real and feeding my family a home-cooked meal. That's important to me. That's important to me. And planting the garden and watching it grow. When it comes to versatility on your operation, nothing beats a John Deere D-Series skid steer. They're not only great for cleaning and feed chores, but with John Deere Worksite Pro attachments, you can tackle just about any job thrown your way. You asked for versatility, and John Deere delivered. These rock-solid machines are built to last. See your dealer today. show you a spin on a popular Italian style dish that's both high on flavor and also quick to prepare. Chef Kristen Snow from the Culinary Innovation Center joins us in the studio today to teach us how to make a no noodle beef lasagna dip. Is that right Kristen? That is right and Kevin thank you so much for having me today. Welcome to the show. <laughs> well uh, you know you don't see beef that often in appetizer dishes and and so I was excited to see you're bringing a recipe to show us how to, we can use beef in a tasty and simple appetizer. Yeah, you know, this is really great because it's um, a really fast and easy way to incorporate beef into um, those uh, quick yeah. parties, um, Super Bowl parties, entertaining um, that you might have. Um, this is a really uh, easy way to throw it all together and have beef again on the menu. So, Well, you're starting with a pie pan, so, so help me out there. <laughs> I am. You know, I, to save us a little bit of time, I actually went ahead and, and we've started off with some cream cheese. Oh, yeah. And I went ahead and pulled that out earlier and softened that up. And I layered it um, just nice and smooth in the bottom of a baking dish. Okay. You could use whatever you have at home. Sure. Um, would be an easy one to do. So, um, so again, we just start with that. And I've got some pot roast. Oh. Already made pot roast that I picked up at the grocery store. You picked it up already made like that? I did, I except it was, I went ahead and shredded it. Wow. So it's just really fast and easy way to, to bring it in. So um, if you have leftover pot sure. roast at home, you could definitely utilize that for this recipe as too. Mm, so, okay. um, and so it, let's get, get started. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. What do we do? So I've got some sliced green onions. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and layer some of these. Um, just along this ah, next here. I love onions. Add a little extra color Absolutely. and some flavor. Yep. I'm going to save a little bit though. Okay. And that's so at the end, if you prefer to top with a little green oh, onion, you can definitely do that. Do that as well. Okay. And then I have my favorite pasta sauce, ah, jarred yes. pasta sauce, whatever you prefer. Very go good. Go ahead and add that. Prego, whatever you like. That's right. Good. So we go ahead and add that in there. You're going to just mix that together then, huh? I am, yeah. And then one last little flavor um, bite is a little minced garlic. Ah. So we're going to add that in there as well. What's an Italian dish without a little garlic? That's, yeah. <laughs> add that little flavor. So we're just going to give this a nice stir. Yeah. So everything is nicely coated. Yeah. That um, all your beef is covered with your Italian sauce. Okay. It smells good. And then we're going to go ahead and just layer that right in there. Okay, right okay. on top of that. Just put it right on top. Okay. Outstanding. And then we're just going to give it a nice smooth over so we've got an even layer. Good. Okay. Gosh, this is even something I could do it looks like. I, I bet you could. <laughs> now from here it um, we're just going to top it with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Okay. So I've got some shredded. If you have grated at home, you can no use problem. whatever you like. Okay. So we'll top with a little bit of that sure. right on. 
We're going to pop it in an oven at 400 degrees, about oh. 15 to 20 minutes until the sides get nice and kind of bubbly oh, yeah. and the cheese gets a little gooey. Yeah, um, we'll pull it out and then we can serve it with your favorite um, bread or... Yeah, well, and this is the finished product. So you have some, you call these crostinis, is that I, right? I do, yeah. yeah. And what I did is I just grabbed a baguette from the grocery store. Oh, yeah. I cut it on a diagonal and then I just baked it in the oven just to get it nice and crispy. Yep. But I've also put a couple other options on there and you could use whatever your favorite... Um, or, um, side is sure. um, for a little color and also a little change. We did some cucumbers. Okay. And for some fun, we put some breadsticks on That's there. That's great. So you can just dip right out, however you like it. So. Well, thanks for the creativity you bring to serving beef dishes for appetizers. It looks delicious. Thank you, and I hope you like it. Absolutely. <laughs> for this great beef recipe and many others, just head to our website at cattlemanthecattleman.org. Grilling burgers is a simple and delicious way to prepare beef for the whole family, while also enjoying some great time outside. With just a handful of extra ingredients, you can make some great burgers in no time flat. Chef Laura Hagen from the Culinary Innovation Center is with us today to teach us how to make some classic ranch burgers. Laura, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I have to admit, Laura, when it comes to burgers at our house, a lot of times it's just some hamburger and some pepper and throw them on the grill. You are adding a few extra ingredients, sure. I understand. Sure, and there's nothing wrong with just a little bit of salt and pepper on a burger, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, because you can always add a lot of different elements to your burger to, to zip it up. Uh, what I like to do is put all of the rubs and every all of the seasonings into the burger oh, before okay. I even form the patty. Okay. So um, for this instant, uh, ranch rub is really, really easy. Hmm. It's onion powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper, really simple ingredients hmm. that you put into the burger, form it, and then you cook it. So it cooks inside the burger. So gotcha. it's a really nice way of, of incorporating that flavor into the it's beef. It's not really a rub. I mean, you're, you're mixing it in with the ground beef right. before you make those patties. Right, exactly. Yep, rub is not, a lot of people will use rubs sure. and put that on the outside, outside of the burger. It's kind of like what you're doing with the salt and pepper just sure. on top. So this is going to infuse flavor all the way throughout. Very good. So if I'm at a tailgate party, yeah. one of the things I love to do is bring burgers mm -hmm. because I think it's really, really easy to get them all prepped in advance. You bet. And then put the form the patties, have them all layered in a nice cooler, keep them nice and cold, and then mm -hmm. kind of cook them to order. I oh, got gotcha. you. know, Coleman stove or whatever you've got you that you bet. want to work with, you can um, you can do at a tailgate. Um, here we're obviously doing it right onto a grill pan, so simple way to do it inside the house if sure. it's raining. Mm -hmm. You could put it on your outside grill. If you I wish it was really raining, quickly. Laura, <laughs> this summer. Yeah, 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 it's been it's been really dry this year, hasn't it? So we're going to take this luscious burger yes. and we're going to put it onto a beautiful whole wheat bun. Okay. What I like to do first is I like to use the bottom as kind of my, my base, mm -hmm. and I like to put something on there that's going to block any type of liquid from getting to the bun. Okay. So I'm going to take this romaine lettuce, lettuce yeah. lay that across. Okay. This will prevent the burger from Get the juices soggy. going in there, and you want the, yeah. you want the juices to stay within sure. the burger. Yeah. So I will take the burger itself. Put it on our beautiful lettuce. beautiful here. That does look good. And then layer with a little bit of tomato. Sure. I think for this purpose we'll just use two okay. or else we're going to end up with it all falling. Sure. And then this is simply low fat ranch dressing. Oh, okay. That's all it is. I love ranch. So it complements the flavors that we've put inside sure. the ground beef. Yeah. And there we have a Voila. ranch burger. That looks great. And Super you brought easy. a couple of other uh, burgers that you uh, kind of dressed up in a little different way. Yes. The, the, the ranch seasoning um, within this burger is pretty neutral, mm -hmm. so it doesn't lean one way or the other, so we can do just about anything we want mm. with toppings and sauces. So we have here a Southwest burger mm. with green chilies, pepper jack cheese, wow. and a little bit of guacamole. Yeah. And then we have a teriyaki burger where we grilled pineapple, so another use for your grills. Put that fruit Very on there idea. and grill yeah. it up and get it nice and caramelized with a little bit of teriyaki sauce. And finally, there's our classic ranch burger. I like to put a little bit of healthy and a little bit of decadent on my plate, so I've got the um, broccoli and carrots. Sure. Probably add a little bit of my ranch dressing so I can do it as a dip. dip and then yeah. we've got some beautiful kettle chips. And so kind of appealing to anybody. Well, you're so. making my w mouth water already. Thank you so much Thanks. for coming and giving us a new twist on an old favorite. Thank you so much. For complete recipe details and to see more great beef recipes, just go to our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Join producers from around the country at the 2014 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Nashville, Tennessee. It's an event that, that we will never miss. I love 
seeing the enthusiasm, I think it's great. It's perfect combination and the perfect time to hold the NCBA convention. Join your fellow cattlemen for the latest cattle industry news, education, networking, and fun. Plus, at the NCBA trade show, get the latest in industry technology for the cattle business. This trade show is one of the best trade shows that is out there. It's amazing the amount of industry and businesses that come here to be a part in. And there's no other place that for those of us as beef producers can go to have this much information in one place. So follow me to Tennessee for the 2014 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Nashville, February 4th through the 7th. Learn more at beefusa.org. We each have thousands of taste buds, and this beef dish uses every last one of them. Chef Laura Hagen from the Culinary Innovation Center is with us today, and Laura, you're going to tell us how to make a glazed tri-tip roast with creamy gorgonzola sauce, I understand. Well, first of all, tell us, Laura, about the tri-tip itself. Well, the tri-tip is from the sirloin. Mm -hmm. It's a new cut to a relatively a lot of people around the country. Um, started out west, so the westernmost states and southern, southwestern most states tend to have it in stores and um, make it available to people. A lot of Californians love fixing a tri-tip. Yeah, absolutely. It can be done in many different ways. Uh, for this recipe, we're roasting it. Okay. So we're using just our regular home oven and we're going to uh, marinate it first. Okay. We use a marinade that has a lot of what we call umami qualities. Mm. Umami is something that enhances beef. Beef already has natural umami, yeah. and um, umami is the fifth taste. In yeah. Japanese, it means deliciousness. So oh, wow. it's adding a really, really lovely flavor to this roast. Okay. We use a balsamic vinegar, a okay. little bit of soy sauce, a little bit of light brown sugar, and some garlic. And how long will you marinate that? Marinating, because this is a flavor marinade, it's yeah. not a tenderizing marinade. That sirloin tri-tip does not need to be tenderized. Okay. Um, probably anywhere from 30 minutes to about two hours oh, is as quick. far as you want to go with that. Okay. We save half of the marinade. Uh -huh. so that we can create the glaze, as it says in the recipe title, right. um, about partway through cooking. This, this roast will only take about 40 minutes. Wow. So when I'm doing a dinner party or something like that at home, this yeah. is a great one. You can pop it in and you know have a little bit of uh, appetizers and that type of thing, and then take it out, and then you're good to go. It's really, really this quick. It's not a fast. pot roast that you're going to cook all day long. Exactly. Yeah. This okay. one we've taken out, um, and we're letting it rest. Okay. So, as I mentioned with the glaze, well, about partway through cooking, we're, we're going to put the, um, the glaze on so that in the final stages of cooking, it's going to get a nice glaze over the top. You can I see it's see. got a really nice, um, nice glaze. We've also added a little bit of red mm -hmm. onion. Looks good. And uh, roasted those as well. So, that's kind of nice to have that flavor as mm -hmm. well. The topper to it is yet another umami element to this dish. Okay. So, I mentioned umami means deliciousness. Yes. So, we're going to add more flavor mm -hmm. by creating this creamy gorgonzola sauce. We're actually, we're doing it at, um, cold. Oh. So, it's not going to be a warm sauce. We don't have to put it on the stove top. Hmm. This is something I could make in advance, put in the fridge, okay. finish up the roast, and then bring it out room temp, about room temp, to make sure that it's not um, too stiff. Okay. Um, cream cheese. I like right. to use a little bit of cream cheese yeah. in here. That's super good. easy. Soften it so it's a little easier to stir. Okay. And then we're going to use Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt is really, really creamy. Is, is that what's different about it? Yeah, it doesn't have um, regular yogurt you might find at the store sometimes has too much of a bite to it. Okay. This one tends to be a little bit more mellow and it's got a really nice creamy quality. All right. And you have blue cheese there or what's that? This is gorgonzola That's cheese. That's a of course. Type yeah. of blue cheese. Yeah. If you um, if you have blue cheese in the fridge already, crumble it up, use that. If you're at the store and they don't have gorgonzola, really look for some sort of pungent cheese. Okay. Um, I would go with blue cheese, but yeah. certainly you could use something that just has a little pungency to it. You want it to stand out. Very good. So we're going to drop that in there. A mm -hmm. little bit of minced onion. Sure. And Some a pepper, little bit huh? of just black pepper, a okay. little bit. You could, if you don't want your sauce to have that um, that pepper mm -hmm. in it, sure. you could certainly use a little white pepper. Okay. And that won't change color. Very good. So we've got our mix going here. Just mix it up, huh? Yeah. And it really adds a lovely flavor to mm -hmm. it. And because it's cold, when you put it on to the warm roast pieces, it's just going to start oh, melting. Drizzle a little bit. So it'll have a really, really lovely uh, texture. 
Very good. And we have created a plate over here. Yeah, so this is the finished product. Yes, and, it is. And, and as you said, you would likely not serve that on the side. You would maybe drizzle that over. I might drizzle over. it. I may actually give everybody who is sitting at my dinner party maybe a little tiny ramekin of it oh, on the side. Yeah. And then we did some beautiful broccoli and the red onion that came off the roasting pan. Great looking dish. Laura, thank you so much for coming today. You're welcome. Thank you. For complete recipe details and to check out more great beef recipes, head to our website at cattlemanthecattleman.org. Oftentimes, there isn't a whole lot of time between when you get home and when dinner needs to be put on the table. Fortunately, there are plenty of great tasting beef recipes that really don't take that much time to prepare. And joining us in the studio to show us one of those easy weeknight meals is Chef Shanoa French from the Culinary Innovations team. Shanoa, thanks for coming to the show. And what are we cooking today? Thanks for having me back. Today we're going to do um, sautéed steaks with a wild mushroom um, side. Oh. So it's something really simple. Yeah. You can. It's a 10 to 15 minute recipe at Perfect. home. So as long as you need, you have your ingredients, you're good to go. We're going to start. We've got our pan warm. So I'm going to start get some stuff in here before we get too warm. Okay. Um, this is a cast iron skillet, and sure. it's one of my favorite in the house um, cooking method or cooking vessels. It yeah. holds its heat well. It's a very even cooking temperature. Okay. So add a little bit of olive oil in there, yeah. and then we're going to add a little bit of garlic. It calls for two cloves, and one okay. one will start in the in the skillet, and then one will go for a rub. Never so, too much garlic. <laughs> never. Well. <laughs> There, there's a point of no return on I that, but that's yeah. Good. So you want to get your your pan to a nice temperature, get your garlic in there, yeah. um, get that working, and then we're mm. going to add three cups of mushrooms. All now right. you can use whichever mushrooms you prefer. All right. um, these were sliced whole button mushrooms mm -hmm. and baby bellas because okay. that's what we had. Um, if you have oyster mushrooms or shiitake mushrooms, gotcha. whatever you have, go ahead and use those. Yeah. Um, most important things with when you're cooking mushrooms is that you clean them real good, but don't clean them too far ahead. They are a, a vegetable that will absorb a lot of water. Oh, really? And so it's best to clean them right before you use them. I did not Cut off that. the bottom so you don't eat the stems. But um, give, them a nice, give them a nice stir. You want to have your pan um, warm enough yep. that you get a nice brown on them. Okay. Um, mushrooms will leach a lot of water. And so if you don't have your pan up high enough, then you'll end up kind of steaming them and oh, they'll really? get soggy. So and you have, that's olive oil, you said. Yeah, or, that was a little yeah. bit of olive oil I to see. start in the pan. Gotcha. Um, you can add a little bit of butter if you want to. It's kind of really up to you. How long should I expect that to take? Then? You know, it kind of depends on your heat, but these, these are a five to six minute type process. If okay. you like your mushrooms more well done, you cook mm -hmm. them a little bit longer. Sure. Um, but you de definitely want to brown um, nice brown color on them. So while these are working, we're going to move yeah. over and, and work on our steak here, the most important part. Oh. This would be a little bit of extra garlic, and I've started with our, our rub, okay. which is thyme. Yep. And remember, you can use fresh thyme or you can use um, a dried thyme. Sure. You need to adjust your seasoning if you're using dry. You need a little bit more. Okay. And remember, when you're pulling thyme, you pull it backwards right. off the stem. You've told us that So before. we show you that. Yeah. And then there's just a little bit of chopped garlic in here. Okay. Real simple. And, and, and what kind of steaks are we working with there? Yeah, so this might be a, a more of an unusual cut for some mm -hmm. in the retail. It's kind of slowly moving into the retail case. Okay. This is um, your sirloin cap. Oh. Or in the food service, it's called a culotte steak. Hmm. Um, and like I said, some people are roasting the, the cap whole, okay. or they've cut them into steaks, steaks. now. Yeah, these are these are a great steak. They have a yeah. a nice um, cap on them, which gives you some good flavoring, Absolutely. and then you can cut that off the table. That's great um, if you can't find culotte steaks at the retail case, sirloin, sirloin, exactly. So it all comes from the same family. So I'm gonna put these on real quick. Um, you want to make sure that you get a nice rub. You bet. Both sides. You're gonna season your steaks real good. Um, kind of press it all in there, yep. flip them over, do the same thing. Obviously, you're using fresh herbs, sure. so they, you don't want too many or they'll kind of sear in the pan if you don't have a right okay. temperature. Um, mm. And they're better usually in a skillet than they are outside. We're also going to throw on just a touch of salt and salt pepper. And pepper. Sure. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to add a touch of salt and pepper oh, to yeah. my mushrooms. Very good. So I like my mushrooms not overly cooked. Okay. Kind of in that in between stage. So yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull these mushrooms out of this pan, ah. and we're going to cook the steaks right here oh, in the right skillet. In the pan. So Perfect. it's yeah. a one one skillet meal. Um, like I said, this burner is on low, yeah. so I got it hot, and it'll hold that heat for you Very and good. give you a nice sear so on there. 
both fast and few dishes. Those yes. are my kind of meals. Yeah, so we're gonna get rid of oh, these it mushrooms. Smells great. Yeah, I think it, you know, I mean, so many people think that you have to prepare and plan for a beef dish, but, you know, like you're showing us, I mean, as long as you're going to grill something or put something in a skillet like this, this can be super fast. Yeah. It, it's that nice. If you do a little bit of planning, even if it's on the drive home, sure. like what, what steaks to pop into the grocery store and get yeah. a couple of key ingredients, you're good to go. You're ready to All roll. right. So we'll let those set. Mm. Same kind of thing you do at home. Just Sounds let great. them season in. I'm going to add just a touch more. Of olive oil. The other trick with cast iron is you never use soap in these pans. That's kind oh, really? of the, they talk about seasoning your pan and then it, it keeps building. Okay. So um, want to make sure we have a little bit of, of olive oil in there so they don't stick. Gotcha. And then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take these and just put it in you know, the pan. I'll be honest. I, I most of my steaks go on the grill. So so what are some if you're gonna do them in a skillet like this on the stove? What are some tips? Um, Again, it's similar, very similar to grilling. We call this pan broiling, yeah. um, and we have all the guidelines on beef cooks for dinner if that's what you're looking for. Perfect. But you want to start with a nice medium heat pan. Yeah. You want enough heat that it's going to give a sear to the outside and not turn gray. Mm -hmm. So if you have your heat too low, um, you're going to kind of steam and get not the Maillard reaction that we're looking for. Okay. But if you're too high, same with on the grill, you're going to burn the outside right. and be raw on the inside. So I let this sit. Like I said, these are about an eight to eleven minute steak. Okay. So you let them work. Um, half the time yep. and flip them once. Flip them over. And then, like I said, they'll go directly. And as you can see, I don't know if we're quite there yet, but it's working on getting that nice sure. sear Looks on great. there. And that's what you want is that good sear on the pan. And cast irons are great for that. That's great. And so, when we're done, yeah, this is the finished product. The simple thing, we just threw an ear of corn on that, but you can pick whatever your favorite vegetable is to, to have a great quick night meal. Looks absolutely delicious. Thank you so, uh, so much uh, for bringing us another great recipe. And if you'd like to have more details on this recipe or any others, just go to our website at cattleman cattleman.org. You're not responsible for the weather, just the cattle. And Rangeland works as hard as you do to deliver performance, production, and profitability. Cattle need consistent nutrition. They'll get it year-round with Rangeland products from Lando Lakes. Deliver what they need free choice in weather-resistant loose minerals and mineral and protein tubs. Get the most out of your forage. See your Lando Lakes co-op for products that will stand up to whatever Mother Nature throws at us. Weather's coming in. Rangeland. Consider it done. NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman is your source for industry updates that impact your operation. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association is continuing its fight against the so-called death tax. Hear from congressional members on important issues, learn about the best practices for beef quality assurance, and visit operations from around the country. All in one hour, NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman, Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern on RFD-TV. Seventy percent of consumers want to know where their food comes from and how can we ignore them? IMI Global offers third-party audited source and age verification essential for export markets and specialty markets like natural, organic, omnivoric, Eskimo, or possibly recovering vegan certified. For quality and age producers, to the big boys, any cattleman who wants to expand his market, you're not just buying this green ear tag, you're buying peace of mind. IMIGlobal.com Let's face it, you don't think a lot about your trailer hitch. You use it and forget it. We understand, but at B&W, we think about it. Short nights, long hauls, never ending chores. The unthinkable. We think about it all, so you don't have to. B&W, trusted. There's an old story that claims the last two fellers left on board the Titanic when it hit that iceberg and sank were cattle feeders. As they clung to the stern, one was heard to say, just hang on, Tommy, it's bound to come back up. The volatility of the market in the cow business is legend. The cowman can be Dr. Jekyll one day and hide and tallow the next. He's kind to his wife when the market goes up his children think that he's neat. The implement dealer sits by him in church, and his banker waves on the street. Salesmen treat him like he was the king. 
hired man asked for a raise. And the press is reporting exorbitant gains and the bankers singing his praise. A genius, he humbly admits to himself, smart as a tree full of owls. 20 foot tall with a bulletproof brain and a friend to all of his pals. But something occurs when the market goes down. His family feels it first. The mother-in-law gives him plenty of room and the dog gets regularly cursed. He gets lots of mail from lawyers in town and the gas man won't fill up his tank. And the feed company rep has forgotten his name and he's a leper down at the bank. His ulcer is worse, his accountant's in jail and they repoed the pickup he had. His jeans don't fit. They bag in the rear, they've chewed on his tail so bad. And he might get discouraged, but down at the sale, his heart will rejuvenate. A gambler in spirit whose living depends on the fickle finger of fate. So just like the story of Jekyll and Hyde, he's a wise man or a clown, a hero or a fool depending on whether the market goes up or goes down. <laughs> this is Baxter Black from out there. Ever wonder where the beef checkoff dollar goes and what it buys? The Federation of State Beef Councils is made up of the 45 qualified state beef councils that collect the $1 per head beef checkoff. Each council keeps control of 50 cents and sends 50 cents to the Cattlemen's Beef Board for use in national beef checkoff programs. Many states also choose to send a portion of their share to the Federation to expand national and international efforts. As a division of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, the Federation of State Beef Councils works to support an effective state and national partnership, helping to increase beef demand through research, promotion, and education. Because producers themselves direct these programs, your beef checkoff dollars are in good hands. Learn more about the Federation of State Beef Councils by visiting beefusa.org. Welcome back. This week's legacy photos feature our new NCBA president, Scott George, on his operation in Cody, Wyoming. Let's have a look. To submit pictures of your farm or ranch and potentially see them on a future episode, just visit our website at cattleman2cattleman.org. Well, that does it for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. We'll see you right back here next week on RFD TV.